प्रेजेंट किया उसके बाद नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चंस और उसको जो एक अगर समराइज करें तो देर आर नंबर ऑफ पॉइंट और जो हमें पता चला कि 1970s से ये ओल्ड बेड मिथे के ऊपर काम हो रहा है और मुख्तलिफ ममालिक ऊपर काम कर रहे हैं जिसके अंदर अमेरिका ऑस्ट्रेलिया चाइना इंडोनेशिया और इंडिया भी शामिल है और अमरीका में आठ फीसद गैस सी बी एम से प्रोड्यूस होती है और ये मीथेन जिसके अंदर नाइन्टी एट परसेंट मीथेन सी बी एम इट कम्प्राइज नाइन एट परसेंट मीथेन और अमेरिका के अंदर देर आर अबाउट ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड वेल्स दैट आर करंटली इन यूज टू एक्सट्रैक्ट दिस गैस और स्टडीज इसके ऊपर कैरी आउट की गई हैं मुख्तलिफ जगहों पे और मुख्तलिफ पोल्स के ऊपर और इस ताकि इसके करेक्टरिस्टिक्स को इसके समझा जाए और इसके अंदर देखा जाए कि कितने प्रेशर के ऊपर कौन सा कोल कितनी गैस वो प्रोड्यूस कर सकता है और इसके अंदर जो अमेरिकन जो कोल्स के ऊपर वो स्टडी की गई उसके अंदर लिग्नाइट को भी स्टडी किया गया अगर अगरचे कम इसका इसके अंदर वो पोटेंशियल है कंपेयर टू अदर हाई क्वालिटी कोल्स लेकिन स्टिल इट ऑफर्स द पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ बेनिफिटिंग फ्रॉम दिस टेक्नोलॉजी और आखिर में हमने कंक्लूड किया हक पन्ना साहब ने और सईद जदून साहब ने भी इसके ऊपर वो ये एक कंक्लूड किया कि हम इसको गोइंग फॉरवर्ड एक सूटेबल स्टडी कैरी आउट करेंगे ताकि इसको हम रिलेट कर सकें हमारे थर के कोयले से कि ये अगर इस तरह का कोल बेड मिथेन बाकी जगहों पे इतने अरसे से इसका लर्निंग कर्व है तो हम इसको कैसे इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं तो हम आज के सेशन के अंदर जो आगे इसको इसी डिस्कशन को आगे लेके चलेंगे और हम इसको जूम इन करेंगे अपने थर कोल के साथ के इसके अंदर थर कोल के साथ कैसे मासलत है और इसको हम कैसे अपने बेनिफिट के लिए इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं सो ओवर टू यू हक मिना साहब थैंक यू डॉक्टर साहब बस मैं सिर्फ यही गुजारिश करूंगा कि सी बी एम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से ऑलरेडी एक पहले मैंने बताया था कि थी एक कंपनी थी जिसने एक बताया था कि ट्वेंटी वन टी की पोटेंशियल है लेकिन वो अभी तक हम अप नहीं हो सकी कि क्योंकि वो वाकई है यानी किसी पाकिस्तान में अनफॉर्चुनेटली अभी तक इस रिसोर्स पे काम नहीं हुआ अभी हमारे लिए वे फॉरवर्ड यही है कि पहली जो आपकी एजुकेशनल सेमिनार वेबिनार के बाद इसके ऊपर जैसे मुनीब साहब ने कहा कि वी नीड टू फम अप रिसोर्स वेदर सी बी एम की मौजूदगी कोल थर में है या लाकड़ा में या कोल में पाकिस्तान के किसी भी कोल माए कोल रिजर्व में या रिसोर्स में सी बी एम की मौजूदगी है या नहीं तो ये अकमना साहब आपकी तरफ से बड़ी कंट्रीब्यूशन है कि यू आर एजुकेटिंग एज आई सेट अर्लियर के वी आई आई एम गोइंग टू इनशियट सम फ्लो वर्क और जो भी यहाँ पे डिस्कशन हुई है और उनीब साहब भी इसमें हमारी हेल्प करेंगे कि हम इसको डॉक्यूमेंट करके सिंध कोल अथॉरिटी को भेजेंगे और मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ पेट्रोलिंग को ताकि इसको फर्दर इसकी स्टडी की जा सके तभी जाकर ये यूजफुल होगा अदरवाइज हम क्योंकि डिस्कशन फॉर सेक ऑफ डिस्कशन जो है यूजफुल है एजुकेशन के लिए लेकिन प्रैक्टिकली वी एवरीबडी वी हैव टू वर्क टूगेदर इन सच वे एंड वी शुड प्रिपेयर रिकमेंडेशन and documents for the question call authority and ministry of petroleum to take further practical step liye ja sake so anyway meri hum bahut shukur guzar hai akmal uh, sahab ka aur oneep sahab hamare usually coal technology ke moderator hai aur pehle bhi se webinar ho chuke hain coal par aur ye cbm jo hai akmal sahab ne apne zimme liya hai and he is doing good job he is contributing thank you very much oneep sahab aur petroleum club of pakistan ka jo objective hai wo yahi hai ki hum apne indigenous resources ki मालूम लोगों तक पहुँचाएं इन्फॉर्मेशन पहुँचाएं हाउ वी कैन डेस्मिनेट नॉलेज अबाउट दी रिसोर्स वी हैव हाउ वी कैन एक्सप्लाइट एट हाउ वी कैन मेक दिस कंट्री टू सम एक्सटेंट सेल्फ सफिशेंट ताकि एनर्जी सेल्फ सफिशेंट ताकि जो इस वक्त एनर्जी के हमारे फुकदान है इसी तरीके से वो मिनिमाइज हो सके तो मेरी तरफ से यही कुछ है और आप प्लीज़ गो एट अकनासब थैंक यू वेरी मच
So thank you, Dr. Saab. So this is basically the crux of your discussion is that this discussion is not just academic. It is uh, yeah. of practical use and very much needed. If you simply yes. put two things together, number one is that CBM is a huge resource in the, in the world production, uh, contribution of CBM, such as uh, U.S. is producing about 8%, number one. So CBS is actually is a, is a, is a easy to produce. It is called unconventional gas, but it is as easy, easy to produce as a conventional gas. Number one. Secondly, we have huge coal reserves, huge coal reserves. So it makes an obvious thing next, in fact, to just see that what kind of CBM potential we have. And it is a kind of, uh, I would say, is a crime that we didn't really look at, at this thing in the past. But uh, at least we have an opportunity and I'm glad to be part of that. So uh, this session, what we'll do is we'll uh, drill deep a little bit into coal bed methane characterization. And I apologize for this session being a little bit kind of technical. And but I'll, I, this is my really kind of uh, dilemma, how to make it simple and high level at the same time to show you necessary details. OK, but once we go into working group, we can do an extensive educational uh, sessions, uh, which may uh, typically I do this thing in five day course. But this one, I, I'm keeping a still a high level. But we will go. We can go deep as much as you want, depending on your questions. Okay. So coal, as we said, as we, you can see on the left side picture, that we start with the uh, trees and uh, in some swampy area, and that gets buried and goes into on the right side uh, uh, with the time and pressure goes into peat and lignite and bituminous coal and anthracite. So for us, really for CBM purpose, the most useful coal is bituminous coal. Although we will discuss one example from uh, US, which is a powder river basin where lignite type of coal has also been producing very successfully. Although it has less gas, but it has been producing very successfully. Uh, so this, this session is uh, basically for, for coal bed characterization. So, but before I do this thing, I am actually struggling. Okay. All right, before I do this thing, I did my introduction, I'm going to skip that. Uh, so uh, already Daksar has done the recap of part one, but I'll still to to make this session complete in self. What I'll do is I'll uh, I've included some necessary slides uh, from the past session. Uh, we have said that different countries who are kind of key countries that are, that are producing gas. This is a different slide, but saying the same thing. Uh, Russia has huge CBM. U.S. has huge C CBM. China, Australia, Canada, Indonesia. These are all the countries which you can declare a call as CBM countries. In Pakistan, since we didn't really look at CBM, we really uh, do not uh, uh, come into this picture. But when we talk about coal resources, we are in a big position. But uh, for CBM, we are not really yet anywhere in the, in the global picture. CBM, <clears throat> compared to other resources we discussed last time, is other resources can be very deep, many kilometers, whereas CBM could be something like uh, a thousand feet to four thousand feet deep. Number one, we don't need any structure for CBM. For example, this CBM bed that you see over here uh, on the top, black uh, moon type shape, is actually a sink line, not an antique line. So you really don't need a structure. It is CBM is itself, the coal itself is reservoir, itself is trap, itself is everything, itself is source. Okay, so it's all, all the reservoir or the petroleum system components are there in the coal itself, like shale gas. Uh, it falls under, in this uh, pyramid of uh, resources, it falls under uh, unconventional, which is basically similar to, to tight gas or gas shale, but actually it is cheaper to produce than compared to gas shale. The only reason we call it a, rich, uh, a kind of unconventional source is because it is something, it is a source rock itself. Uh, otherwise, it is very easy to produce. How significant it is in terms of production, this slide shows that in US, they have been producing constantly about 8 to 9% of total gas, which comes out to be nearly 4 BCF per day. That is how much US is producing over the time. Uh, I was looking at the world figure and in the whole world probably they are producing something like 10 BCF per day in the whole world if you add up China and India and Russia and every country. So this is, this is, this is, a, this is a big resource uh, indeed. This, uh, the purpose of the slide is only to show you CBM is not something new. It has been there for almost three decades and uh, a mature technology already and it's a clean source of energy. There's no pollution, nothing. Eh? So initially it was 
it started as as to to basically degasify and uh, and make the coal mines safer to to mine and to 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 degas the coal mines and later on people realized well why not use this uh, this gas which is coming out from from coal mines and they started using it initially for coal mining machinery only and over time it evolved and uh, and 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 developed itself as a as a as a major source of gas we discussed last time about the coal classification uh, i'll revisit that slide once again coal is to, coal has two different properties number one is that how mature it is which is on the left side it is shown on the on the lower axis uh, from lignite to subbituminous to bituminous to semi anthracite and anthracite that depends on the maturity of coal and uh, uh, to what temperature it is exposed to what pressure it is at buried in what's the age of that coal so tertiary coals can be lignite type whereas uh, some cretaceous to our earlier uh, uh, coals can be uh, are usually are more mature so the more mature the coal is up to semi anthracite the better it is once it goes into anthracite it is it is useless on the other hand the other uh, the other element of coal is that how much ash content it has because it is buried together with the uh, other minerals so inorganic uh, stuff such, such as clay and uh, and sand or uh, sometimes carbonate together with those so how much of that percentage is there we will go into more detail in a in a coming slide so the other is the quality of coal how clean how uh, how clean or how ash content it has any non coaly stuff that the coal has we call it ash so the uh, again these two elements we will try to remember third element of course is the what is the nature of that uh, what is the origin of that coal whether it is uh, what type of that coal is which is important we will, we can go to later on in fact in into these details eh lipnite or intrinite or what type of uh, organic material it was <clears throat> so coal from we have to understand the burial history of the coal its deposition environment to understand uh, at what time and uh, how this uh, this coal was deposited and then going to 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 present day that how the coal is being mined so both these things give us understanding about the about the coal how the coal is being mined and deeper somewhere we can have some coal which has a cbm uh, potential okay so going from his uh, geological history burial history burial history is very important sometime what happens is the coals are could be deposited very deep and because they are deep they are mature with good good gas content and they can be later on uplifted and there are many examples like this they can be uplifted and uplifting can basically that becomes coal uh, very shallow and uh, and and something that's easy to produce methane from so gas coal in that case can be shallow but still may have uh, good gas content or again the coal could be buried deep and can go deep a shallow coal uh, can go deep so we really have to look at the buried history of the coal that's very important we discussed last time that what are the key parameters that control the gas production and these are things that, that really we have to remember the thermal maturity how mature that coal is its mackerel composition mackerel is like uh, in an organic matter we look at minerals so you can say how uh, we look at facies so mackerel is something similar in coal so which includes everything that what is the maturity of that coal what is the ash content of that coal what is the moisture content of that coal everything together is uh, is one unit of coal is called mackerel so we have to understand the mackerel composition we have to understand the gas content of that coal uh we look at uh, coal may not have one bed usually it has basically multiple beds we really have to understand uh, the layout of all, all those beds vertically and we should understand the continuity of those beds or else how extensive those beds are they could be spread over many kilometers coal naturally they do not have any permeability so permeability comes only the through the fractures in the coal coal being a brittle rock can fracture quite easily and it is the fractures that really uh, give permeability to the coal and it is the fracture through which gas can be produced okay we will come back to this thing later on that how the gas comes from matrix into the fractures and fr from fractures we can produce that gas in situ stress as you can uh imagine considering the uh, significance of fractures in situ stress is very very important because it is the in situ stress that will control how those fractures were created and is it is the in situ stress 
that will control how those fractures can stay there intact or how those fractures can basically be affected over the time. Okay, permeability again, which is the result of fractures, burial history as we discussed before, hydrology, that was uh, earlier last in last session, Dr. Sarp discussed it, uh, uh, this, this, this raised this point, very important point, hydrology, that how water is being charged to those fractures and how we can easily dewater those holes. We also discussed this thing last time that uh, understanding the coal beds and the how they clean and dull those coals are and the how thick and small those coals are, we can already understand the possibility of fractures in those coals. For example, in thicker coals, we will have less fractures. In thin coal beds, we will have more fractures. In bright coals, again, we will have more fractures. In dull coals, uh, we will have less fractures. So already looking at these uh, coal beds, we can understand uh, the possibility of fractures. But fractures are not something that's unusual. Every coal does have fractures. There are two types of fractures we discussed last time. Last time, The major fractures which are called face cleats and uh, which we can see here going into the, into the uh, screen and, uh, and continues. The perpendicular those are, uh, we call them butt cleats, which are minor fractures. And they are created by major stress and the minor stress. Okay, so, so far, I, I think this was kind of recap of previous session. Okay, you can stop me at any time. Eh? I cannot really see your raised hands, but if you speak, I can hear that. Okay, now, <clears throat> next thing is that we need to do is to drain multiple wells and uh, look at coal beds and uh, understand how those coal seams are connected together, how continuous, thick or thin they are. Once we have done th this thing on the left side, then we go on the right side, which is we build a map of coal thickness, right? Uh, to really estimate the how big, how much coal we have. And I hope, uh, considering what uh, I heard this this just now from Darsha, that uh, we have drilled about uh, some 500 coal wells, we should already have this information. I hope so. Okay. So once we have that estimate of uh, coal thickness or the coal volumes. This is, for example, a similar slide from San Juan Basin. They have multiple wells. This, uh, the log that you see here is uh, resistivity or conductivity log. Even more useful, we will see later on, is the density log. Density log, log is the key log, key uh, uh, well log for, for coal evaluation. And, and, and once we have those logs, we can uh, map the how uh, correlatable and continuous those coals are, coal beds are. Uh, from each well, we take some cores and we can look at the, our cuttings basically, we look at uh, vitrinoid reflectance that tells us the coal maturity. Uh, this, for example, this, uh, this is, these are again the coal maturity in the San Juan Basin. All the coals, everywhere the coals may not be equally mature. Here, for example, you see here in the middle, black stuff, black stuff, black uh, contours, they are the most mature coals with the vitinite reflectance uh, thickness is, I'm, I'm sorry, this is this is thickness, thickness of coals, not vitinite reflectance. In the same way, in fact, what happened was that in the middle, the vitinite reflectance or the coal maturity was the highest. So here what we see is that the coal beds in the middle are the thickest beds. They are more than 70, 70 uh, feet thick. All right. So whereas in the periphery, the coal beds are, are thinner. So we have to really look at, uh, at map these, these coal beds. We also looked at, uh, I, I actually have, I wanted to really show you that uh, map of within that reflectance uh, along this, on this map, but somehow I put this map of thickness because last time, uh, Dr. Nirsa asked me, in fact, this question that does the coal maturity vary over the over uh, over a basin? Yes, it does. It varies a lot. Okay, and uh, I, I will next time I'll put that slide, which shows that within the reflectance of, uh, of 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 these coals over different regions, different areas varies a lot, and it can vary a lot. Okay, so. Which basically means that just drilling one or two wells is not really enough. We have to in the basin we have to. Uh, a drill or core a number of wells, perhaps in every region one or two wells. Okay, so to 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 collect enough data about uh, about the cores. 
We discussed this uh, key figure of Lemur isotherm that controls how the gas is stored on the surface of coals. Okay, so which basically tells us that at higher pressure, the the coal can uh, can store a lot of gas. In this case, for example, this upper curve is for uh, San Juan Basin. This low dotted curve is for Powder River Basin. Different type of coals will have different storage capacity for gas. Uh, and that storage capacity is also again pressure dependent. So what happens is that at high pressure there is more gas present sticking to the coal, uh, coal surface. So what really we have to do is we have to reduce the pressure going from right to left. As we reduce the pressure, the gas which is adsorbed on the coal becomes free. And that free gas moves into coal fractures and from there we produce the gas. So this is the basic mechanism of this uh, uh, gas production from, uh, from, from coals. Gas which is stored in the, which is sticking to the coal beds on the surface with reduction of pressure, that gas will move into the fractures and from fractures we can produce into the wells. So, and how do we re reduce that pressure? By dewatering. Initially those fractures are filled with water. We try, we put, install some pumps we start dewatering, removing that water from the from the fractures, and eventually uh, the pressure is reduced, and uh, and we start producing the, that that gas. We will have plenty of opportunities to really look at this diagram again and again. So what we do basically is that we uh, initially we start uh, we put a pump, install a pump here in the, within the well. We start uh, dewatering it, remove this uh, this water as the pressure goes down. Initially, the water production is very high because there is only water. Water production over time goes down uh, on the left uh, dashed curve. And as the water production goes down, amount of water in the fractures goes down and that reduces the hydrostatic pressure there. As the hydrostatic pressure is reduced, looking at the previous diagram that we have seen, the pressures around the coal seams is reduced. And with that reduction in pressure, gas starts coming out. And so over time, the amount of gas keeps on increasing. Eventually, we reach a stable time of production, stable gas production. But eventually, we run out of gas and we start uh, declining that, uh, that, that production. But the life of a well could be very long, could be about 20, uh, 20 years, typically. Okay, So the well, wells keep on producing for a long time, although the, uh, the gas rate per well may not be very high. It could be typically probably 100 to 200 uh, thousand cubic feet, or at the most probably 0.5 million cubic feet. Uh, uh, ek second, ye jo, uh, gas ke production aap bata rahe, ye aap rahe, maximum 0.5 million per day? Hoti hai? Typically, in fact, even less than 0.5. If you have a well of 0.5 million cubic feet per day, that's a good well. That's a very good well. Achha. Yes. Typically, the gas production is not very high in these wells. But again, it depends on the well completion. If we drill, for example, horizontal wells, and we'll come to this, if we make hydraulic fractures, we can increase that gas production many times. Well, what, what is the well spacing? Uh, typically, about one kilometer. One kilometer spacing? One, kilo, one kilometer. It, depends, it, it, it also depends on permeability. In good permeability, you can increase that spacing to one kilometer, but uh, in low permeability, you have to keep this well spacing very close. So, so, this, so mean to, this mean to produce both, suppose, 100 million or 10 million gas, you need hundreds of the wells, huh? Absolutely. You need hundreds of wells. Okay. But these wells are very cheap. The, I mean, imagine yes. these wells are only about uh, uh, 2,000 feet, for example. Yes. So you can have some very cheap rigs to, to drill those wells, not not really very sophisticated rigs. Uh, someone like locally made rigs can be can be used. Yes. Okay. So it's 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 a technology is is very crude and very simple technology. That's used. So there is a there's a there's question no from uh, there's a one question from probably Shahid OG Putin Shahid Slim Saba ya koi or hai. Let's go ahead, Ji. Shahid ka naam aara hai Ji. Yes, yes. My name is Shahid Javed from OGDCL. Okay. Uh, my question is about uh, 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 permeability. I think uh, in uh, coal, uh, there is a fractures rather than the permeability. Uh, the uh, fractures are probably um, producing the gas after hydraulic fracturing uh, rather than its permeability, uh, uh, I think so. That's so, true, Shahid. This is, this is absolutely the permeability comes only from fractures. 
permeability <laughs> comes only from fracture so when we say permeability still uh, you you do a typical well test dst test or any test and we measure what is the permeability of those that well but that you are right permeability comes only from fractures the coal does okay. not have any permeability yes ji theek hai ji please okay all right so uh, uh, okay now Uh, coming back to 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 core in fact what we do how do we take core <coughs> we we take core like any other uh, any other wells but all we have to do is to keep those cores locked as soon as the coal reaches the surface we put that core in a in a little can we call it canisters so so that we all the gas which is there in the core can stay within the core within that canister all right so that's taking a core is is uh, is is a common thing not, not, not nothing unusual the only thing is that as soon as it comes to the surface we have to immediately put it in canister it is a sealed container we take that uh, that core to the to the to the lab what we do is that we leave that core there and the gas starts coming out it's a closed uh, container and we keep on measuring how much gas is coming out okay so over time this uh, on the on the horizontal axis is the time in fact the square root of time and the vertical axis is is the gas content how, ma how much gas is coming out and uh, so initially what we do is uh, we don't really measure some of the gas because the process of getting that core to the surface will release some of the gas so we call it lost gas so there is some lost gas but we can estimate the lost gas that's why we actually draw this curve we we just estimate this this gas that if we had taken that core uh, immediately and uh, sealed it quickly without uh, releasing any gas we can account for that estimate that lost gas so but anyway we we keep on uh, measuring the gas it may take couple of days we leave the core there and let any gas come that that wants to come out from that core uh, come out from the core and uh, eventually when uh, it may take too long in a few days time we can even crush the core and we call later on the gas that we cannot really account for here we call it residual gas so that's hey, how Uneep we come to okay uh, uneep saab has a question ji dr uneep ji uh, hagman saab can you go back to the previous slide yes i right, sure and explain a little bit more on on the core um or itself uh, mm -hmm. which comprises uh, which which has this gas so so you out of uh, out of the wells um you uh, take out uh, these cores how how does this work work uh, the, these cores this process can, of uh, okay we can take this core like uh, uh either we can take this core as a full bore core and as soon as it reaches the surface we can take that core there are three different ways actually one is the simplest and the cheapest way is the cuttings the cutting that come to the surface we can enclose those cuttings but typically uh if we want to be a bit little bit more sophisticated we can we take cores through a core barrel that is below the bit we add a core barrel which is a hollow Uh, which does not have a, and as soon as hollow goes those cutting in fact as it is the drilling the core goes inside the core barrel we take that core to the surface and immediately we cut those small pieces of cores i don't have that picture here we cut that, that entire core into small pieces and put every piece into sep separate canister or the cans third is that we have some logging tools we drill a well and after that we can go down with a logging tool that has uh, a kind of me means of entering into the well bore uh, into the side side wall and take a core from there we can become even more sophisticated sometime and these days some people are doing that we can take a pressured core in that case when we take the core from the down hole from the well itself we can maintain its pressure in that case we will not have any lost gas that you see in this picture उट गोइंग फ्रॉम 
Absolutely, yeah. it is. And it is. It is a sample of the coal itself. It's a sample of the coal itself that could be uh, typically uh, uh, could be of different dimensions. Uh, probably about uh, two inches wide and uh, in a cylinder, two inches slender and maybe a uh, few inches long. I'm um, right. just clear. Uh, just clear. करने के लिए ओनीप साहब ये exact actual in situ. कोल जो है पूरी कोर जो है यू कैन हैव ए कोर इन सिचु कंडीशन जो भी है वो प्रिजर्व फॉर्म में आती है ऊपर एंड और उसको ऊपर जो कैनेस्टर यूज करते हैं ताकि उसमें गैस में एग्जैक्ट इन सिचु कंडीशन से एक्चुअल वर्जन कोल की जो कंडीशन होती है वो कोर में आ जाती है पूरी की पूरी सो दिस कैनेस्टर जो कैनेस्टर दैट कंटेन्स इट so the, it has that uh, mechanism of uh, leading putting a lid on so that uh, this core that goes in can canister so you tighten that to a certain specification so that the gas does not escape yes, absolutely absolutely dr saab yeah this this is this is exactly what the, the purpose of canister is to so that it can keep all the gas inside sure and and Because, do you do you have yeah. any the criteria for uh, for the core size what size this core should be uh it uh, it varies typically it is i can tell you the dimensions of different cores different labs will accept different dimensions but they can also cut that core to really suit their uh, their measurement but typically it is about uh, uh 2 inches uh, diameter and about a few inches long core Okay, but there there could be variety. I can I can I can send you some more details of different varieties of uh, of canisters, which can be sure. Used. But the really, 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 uh, so again, the thing is that a... there is no hard and there is no limitation as such because you see there are sometimes we take a core that we want to do permeability measurement tests. For example, typical mm. conventional cores that Daksha will know. Uh, those cores sure. have to be a specific dimension because we want them to fit into an instrument. Which is used to measure permeability. Here we really mm -hmm. are not that sophisticated. We can take a core, put it in a canister, take it to the to the lab, and there what we do is we put it in a cell where we we can reduce the pressure and let the gas come out slowly. Okay, thank you, Hak Sab. Shahid Sab, uh, do you want to ask anything? Yes, of course. बिल्कुल अच्छा अतमिनाथ साहब असल में जो आप कनेस्टर गैस की जो है ना डिजॉर्बन की बात कर रहे हैं ये एक्सपेरिमेंट जो है ऑलरेडी ओ जो है वो कल कर चुकी है लेकिन ये शेल कोर के ऊपर जो है ना वो किया गया डिजॉर्बन का तो उसमें कनेस्टर गैस जो है वो हमने किया है लेकिन जो आपने सेकेंड ऑप्शन जो है वो दिया है प्रेशराइज कोरिंग का वो मच बेटर है हमारे एक्सपेरिमेंट के दौरान मोर देन फिफ्टी परसेंट गैस जो है वो लॉस्ट गैस है तो वो लॉस्ट गैस जो है मोर देन फिफ्टी परसेंट जब हो जाती है तो वो डेटा की रिलायबिलिटी जो है वो खत्म हो जाती है वो रिलायबल नहीं रहता रेड डेटा तो फिर वो टोटल गैस कंटेंट जो आप उसमें से निकालेंगे तो वो भी रिलायबिलिटी उसकी नहीं होगी और सिमिलर केस जो है वो सी के लिए है कि अगर आप जो है वो कनेस्टर गैस उसके ऊपर भी करते हैं तो उसमें आपके तीन तरह की गैसेज हैं एक आपकी फ्री गैस है एक आपकी लॉस गैस है और एक आपकी जो है वो रेजिडुअल गैस है तो जो चूंकि इसमें फ्रैक्चर्स के अंदर गैसेज होती हैं तो वो ऑलरेडी जो है ना स्केप कर जाएंगी और मोर देन 50 परसेंट अगर लॉस गैस होगी तो रिजल्ट की रिलायबिलिटी जो है ना वो क्वेश्चनेबल हो जाती है तो आई थिंक रिलायबिलिटी ऑप्शन आपने दिया है वो बेटर है ज्यादातर दैन के कनेस्टर गैस जो है लेकिन कॉस्ट वाइज जो है वो प्रेशराइज कोरिंग जो है वो थोड़ी सी कॉस्ट इंटेंसिव है लेकिन ये है कि ये जो है ना वो लो बजट कॉस्ट है इसकी कनेस्टर गैस थैंक यू ओके गुड शाह साहब the these are good uh, comments uh, now the one thing is uh, i have actually myself worked on number of cores and uh, we take uh, uh, unpressurized core sample the only thing is as soon as it reaches to the surface immediately if you can put those cores in canisters uh, and then you when you take that lab measurements you see the lab measurement starts from here because uh, on the left side within that circle uh, If, uh, if some gas will be lost, but what we do is, in fact, we extrapolate these points, the upper major points, and we can go back and estimate the lost gas. 
uh, absolutely, if you want to be very accurate, you should probably take pressure core, but that's very expensive. So initially, to start with, if we have a simple uh, uh, simple cores, unpressurized even, they are good enough to me. I, I have worked actually on hundreds of these cores, and uh, every time I was, I had no problem, in fact, in extrapolating this uh, this gas back to here. And I don't know really, in fact, in, in your case, in shale gas, uh, why you could not really uh, capture all the gas and last gas was more than 50 percent. That's probably a bit too much. And uh, again, I refer to your, your, your questions. Shale gas is a source rock. Coal is also a source rock. So in that sense, they are basically similar. In shale gas also, the hydrocarbon gas or oil is stored in the kerogen. In coal also, the gas is stored in the kerogen. So they are very similar source rocks. Okay, so uh, thank you for this question. So they are they are very similar. They are same family. I'll I'll explain that thing in a in a coming slide. That coal is very similar to shale. And the the only difference is the ash content. The shale the ash content is more. In coal the shale the ash content is higher. So yes, if you want to be very accurate, you should use pressurized coring. But uh, even normal coring, if it is taken, if the sample is uh, is preserved quickly at the surface, and the measurement is made uh, properly in the lab again, and uh, getting estimating lost gas is uh, is okay. And again, to your question about uh, gas in the fractures, that is really not the objective. Number one is the amount of gas in the fractures is very very little, very very small contribution from gas in the fractures. Uh, and and here, in fact, what we we do here is on the on the right side, I have a little uh, equation also. The gas content, total gas content, is the measured gas content plus residual gas content, which is uh, which remains in the coal. But uh, because of time, we cannot really wait uh, for infinite time for too long. And uh, third is the lost gas. We take all that gas and divide by the mass of the coal to estimate the gas content per unit mass of the coal. All right. So, yeah. Please ask. Keep, keep asking these questions. That makes it more interesting. Uh, now, can I ask you just uh, one, one more on this on the uh, last graph that you have? Measurement of gas content. I mean, can, can you just a uh, little bit explain on this uh, methodology of um, this measurement uh, once you've uh, collected the core and then you have this um, measurement, what kind of uh, technique uh, you deploy to to have this uh, gas content measured? Okay, it's basically is a cylinder through which, uh, in which we keep this, uh, this core, it is uh, reduce the pressure in that cylinder and the gas will start coming out of that core. Because we said as before uh, in, uh, in this slide that uh, over here, that as the pressure is reduced, the gas becomes free from the coal. And as it becomes free from the coal, it will start coming out of the coal. All right, now this, using the same uh, concept, if we leave the coal, the gas will start coming out slowly from the coal. Now, of course, there is some gas which is very close to the fractures that will come out at very early time on, on the on the on the on the, the x-axis you have square root of elapsed time from the yes. time you have put that uh, that core into the cylinder so as you keep on waiting more and more gas will start coming out on the y-axis and then yeah. uh, and then uh, as uh, as time passes by the gas which is stuck very deep into the core away from fractures in very small micro pores that will start coming out. So amount sure. of gas will keep on increasing. What kind of and we keep on measuring that gas. And the idea, yeah. actually, what we can do is very simply, Manip Saab, we can even leave that. Uh, we don't have to make this measurement. Leave that gas, and we just measure the total gas. But then we will not be able to estimate this last gas. So the reason we do this uh, square root of time plot is so that we can extrapolate back and estimate the last gas. Mm hmm. Okay, that's the idea and, of of making this continuous measurement. Sure, and what kind of uh, measurement uh, equipment you use to, to I can, measure? I can I can give you in fact uh, in next session what I'll do is I can give you a bit more details about the lab measurements. Okay. Right, okay. So we, have, have we, have the, we have the kind of uh, apparatus in front of us. Uh, at least the picture of that. 
and uh, it's different valves. How do we control? How do we measure the amount of gas? Okay. okay. Right. So we can. So that we can. Ideally, the thing is that we should be able to do its measurements here in Pakistan. Eh? Okay. अपनी आंखों से परफॉर्म होते हुए देखा है फील्ड के ऊपर तो इसमें होता ही है नॉर्मली की एक फीट का सिलेंडर होता है और उसकी साइडो पे सैंड जो है वो फील कर दी जाती है और उसको एयर टाइट जो है ना उसके बाद उसको कर दिया जाता है और उसको जो है ना एक मेंटेन टेम्परेचर के अंदर जो है वो डाल दिया जाता है और उसके उस उस उसके साथ ट्यूब्स को जो है ना वो कनेक्ट कर दिया जाता है और इसके बाद यू शेप्ड एक कैपिलरी ट्यूब होती है जिसमें वाटर होता है जब वो गैस वाली ट्यूब जो है उसके अंदर जाके लगती है तो उसमें ये होता है कि उतना वॉल्यूम जो है वो डिस्प्लेस कर देती है वाटर का जितना वहां से रिलीज होती है गैस कनेस्टर से तो वो क्वांटिटी फी जो है ना वो रीडिंग मेजर कर लेते हैं वो एक घंटे के बाद टाइमिंग सेट करते हैं या आधे घंटे के बाद वो डिफरेंट टाइमिंग के ऊपर डिफरेंट रीडिंग्स जो है वो लेते हैं थैंक यू एब्सोल्युटली इंस्ट्रूमेंट बट देर आर मच मोर एडवांस इंस्ट्रूमेंट टूडे एब्सोल्यूटली शो यू इनफैक्ट ए पिक्चर ऑफ दैट इंस्ट्रूमेंट इन राइट ओके Okay, now in, uh, the, the, the next question is that what are the different things that can affect or what factors can affect the gas content? This is the basic uh, uh, Lemur isotherm that at different pressures, the the coal will have different amount of gas stored inside it. But what are the factors that can control this thing? Number one is the coal rank, as we said before, uh, a coal which is uh, on the on the upper side, the shaded uh, light shaded, that is anthracite. Below it, it is. Uh, Uh, low volatile bituminous th then below it is uh, further below it is medium volatile bituminous and 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 the lowest is the high volatile bituminous and somewhere below will be the lignite okay so the higher the rank of the coal is or the more mature the coal is the more its gas content will be that's obvious uh <clears throat> this is uh, gas content on different coals from uh, from us so what we see here is the uh on the right x on the uh, x axis is the maximum vitrinite reflectance which is indication of coal maturity uh which is low vitrinite reflectance is uh from lignite to subbituminous as uh, vitrinite reflectance ro increases we go to high volatile bituminous and then medium volatile bituminous and low volatile bituminous and then eventually to anthracite on the y axis is the gas content so as you can see in fact is for the for the lignite we have very little gas content small gas content but this is a, we are talking about as we discussed in the previous session we have two different type of gases one is the thermogenic gas which is created by maturity of coal and the other is biogenic gas which is uh, created by by bacterial action we are not looking at back, the the biogenic gas here and in the, in the lignite type coal which is we have thar coal we may have lot of biogenic gas as as is there in the in the powder river basin in powder river basin there is lot of in, uh, almost all the gas is biogenic type so we really have to or if we are fortunate we may have a deeper coals we may have some mature coals the problem is we really have not studied our coal a lot so there are lot of unknowns we are in fact uh, we really don't know what we don't know in in about our coals thar coals we may have some uh, some sub sub bituminous coals which may have uh, enough uh, thermogenic gas so i hope this point is clear that we may have two type of gases uh, generated within the coals one is thermogenic gas because of coal maturity and the other is biogenic gas and uh, this this figure shows the amount of uh, thermogenic gas that could be there in the in different type of coals okay the another thing that controls the uh, this this gas content is uh, temperature as the temperature is uh, is higher and higher the uh, amount of gas will become less and less so typically all these tests in the lab that we do they are usually at the reservoir temperature okay so because uh, we want to uh, really uh, kind of recreate the in situ conditions okay so as the temperature is increased 
gas because of higher kinetic energy the gas will evolve and will escape easily so the gas content will reduce uh the moisture content is again very important as the coal has more and more moisture what water will do is water will basically will be sticking to the coal surface and it will the coal surface will be less available for gas so higher moisture content will result in lower gas gas content okay so the moisture is not really good but moisture is there in 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 coals quite often uh ash content is the other thing and uh, uh, looking at the ash content actually i wanted to also uh show another important point here the density of the coal is a very good indicator of of the coal quality okay the coal has a density of typically about 1. Point, nearly 1.3 uh uh gram per cc whereas as we know our sandstone and carbonates they are about 2.65 to 2.7 uh, gram per cc so as if you look at the lower axis as the this inorganic matter like uh, shale and sand and uh, carbonates they are increased their ratio is increased in coal the density will keep on increasing on the other hand <coughs> if coal content is increased the density will decrease okay so uh, uh, so just, therefore uh, that makes uh, just a uh, announcement ye ke uh, professor uh, dr sarfaz lungi sahab ne sindh university se abhi join kiya unko maine abhi baat ki thi unhone join kar liya he has worked in coal area and cbm to usme hum aap se unse hum uh, comments le lenge jab munas uh, sahab ki presentation chalti rahegi aaj Yeah, yeah, Sarvasa, we can have one-on-one -on -one discussion sometime. Uh, yeah, okay, sure, I, sir. I, I understand that you have done some work on CBM, and uh, we would like to basically learn uh, something about our co own coals. So, what we are discussing here is that the density is such an important measurement uh, for coal uh, uh, understanding, and the and the uh, understanding the ash content in the coal. The higher ash content we have in the coal, higher will be the density. because the coal pure coal has uh, dense very low density little nearly 1.3 gram per cc so uh, yeah. here what we are seeing is the, the gas content varies with the uh, with the with the overall uh, coal we can actually we do two different type of measurements in coal or we represent all the gas content in two different ways one is we use the term as received sometime as received or in situ which basically means the coal has all the volumes all the uh, ash inside it so that is as received coal and the other term that we used is we call it dry ash free which is basically if we take that coal remove all the moisture remove all the uh, inorganic matter and we take pure coal what is the gas content and the reason of knowing uh -huh. that is that in the same bed or in the same area you may have a coal that has let's say 50% ash you have a nearby next door another coal that may have only 25% ash content now those two coals will have based on this diagram will have completely different gas content it is not because of differences in coal quality or the coal rank sorry it is because of the differences in ash content so we want to remove that ash content so that we can compare apple with apple so therefore we use typically dry ash free coal term i hope this is uh, this is clear eh so we use two different terms as received coal or we use dry ash free coal dry ash free is coal is used always but of course if we use dry ash free coal then we use net coal uh, thickness for all the measurements and all the calculations basically basically dry ash code uh, any uh, Yes, that is the important. Only the net coal is important for all the resource calculation of everything. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, when we do this, for example, volumetrics, we really have to understand whether we are using uh, dry ash free or we are using as received. If we are using as received, then we have to use the bulk thicknesses. 
if we are using uh, to our total thicknesses, if we are using dry ash free, then we have to use net thicknesses. But typically, we use dry ash free coal. Okay. All right. Now, uh, this is a point that earlier was raised by uh, Shahid Saab that uh, the density of the coal, uh, pure coal, we said that goes close to even less than 1.3 uh, gram per cc, whereas uh, uh, a pure uh, sandstone is 2.65 gram per cc. And this line that you are seeing, vertical line, that is 50% uh, uh, coal and 50% uh, non-coal stuff or ash. Okay, So this line is basically if you have more than 50% uh, organic matter, we call it coal. If it is less than 50% organic matter, we call it shale, carbonaceous shale. So shale is basically is a kind of continuous thing uh, as we keep on increasing the gas content, we go from shale to coal eventually. All right, so shale is also a source of, that's why as uh, Shai was saying earlier, we use the same techniques of, uh, of estimating gas content in shale as we are doing for the coal. All right, now, again, this slide is show, showing in fact, uh, uh, from different basins in US, uh, uh, San Juan and Pisans and Unita, uh, uh, how the, the gas content varies with the moisture and ash content. So as you can see here is that there is variation from basin to basin, the lower red curve and then the green curve and then the upper blue curve. But at the same time, for each basin, there is a variation as the ash content is increasing. The gas content will keep on reducing as the ash content is uh, increasing. So here, the variation from one line to the other line is because of the cold rank. The variation from within a line is because of increasing ash content. Another important thing is, which is kind of emerging technology, if you look at these two diagrams, uh, those, these two curves, what they are showing is the upper curve is, uh, I mean, any gas can be absorbed into coal matrix. It could be CO2, it could be uh, methane, it could be nitrogen. Here we are showing the two curves, which is the upper solid curve and the lower red curve. Solid curve is upper solid curve is for uh, CO2, pure CO2. And the lower solid curve, uh, this, this red curve is for CH4. So what do you see here is that which one has more gas content? CO2. Yes. That means that the coal can absorb a lot more CO2 compared to its uh, compared to methane. So CO2 has a has a much bigger affinity to to get absorbed into coal. That's a very important property. This means that CO2 can be used for two different purposes. Number one is that if we inject CO2 into coal, what CO2 will do is it can displace methane. So CO2 is, is in some cases being used as a enhanced uh, CBM. Okay, very good. This is the first time we are listening that CO2. you can enhance production of gas through CO2 injection. Good. Absolutely. This, so, so, so CO2 can be used as enhanced, not only CBM, but people are now doing, in fact, enhanced CBM. That's number one. Second is that the CO2, once it goes into coal matrix and it gets stuck into the coal, it stays there forever. So that is a fantastic way of storing CO2. So it when can you, when become... You, when, you will, uh, when you will start producing uh, methane gas, so CO2 will not accompany that CO, uh, methane? Some CO2 will come, but uh, 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 this, is, this, is, this is another important point that if you have, sometimes you may have CO2, some CO2 to start with present in the in the in the coal, but you can actually uh, es estimate here that mm -hmm. from this red curve that if we reduce pressure, for example, from 1500 to 1000. Yes. So looking at red curve, you can uh, draw a triangle here, and you can see in fact how much of methane you can free. At the same time, you can draw a curve in the upper CO2 and you can see how much CO2 you'll produce. Yes. <laughs> now, if you have a uh, upper curve is much more flat, so you'll produce very little CO2 compared to okay. uh, methane, number one. Now, if you have CO2 to start with, you have already CO2, 
of course you will produce some co2 initially and that amount of co2 or the contribution of co2 will vary with pressure initially you may have very small co2 over time your co2 contribution may start increasing but if you stay at very high pressure more than 1000 uh, psi because this red curve is more steep compared to blue curve so the amount of uh, co2 will be much less compared to methane okay, okay. so, uh, so uh, this means that uh, this means that suppose if we are talking about some storage or some uh, kind of place where the co2 and methane uh, co2 and methane could accumulate there so if you start producing you were at 1000 psi pressure uh, person uh, suppose at 1200 psi pressure so the content of co2 and uh, methane will be nearly 50 50 or less uh, no if uh, will be will be less uh, well the thing is that and this is an important point that this content or the composition of co2 and methane will vary at different pressures okay. initially you might be producing uh, only methane because methane will come out quickly from uh, from the coal before co2 starts okay. coming out but over time when the pressure is very low let's say over here when the curve is uh, less than 700 psi or 800 yes. psi then co2 curve becomes very steep okay and this is typically happens in many of these cbm uh, reservoirs that if to start with there is some co2 present in the reservoir which quite often is 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 there then as the reservoir depletes the co2 composition will keep on increasing okay some co2 will be there but a lot of co2 will be stored there okay okay so okay now permeability as was uh, earlier shrad sahab was uh, was discussing about permeability yes permeability is mostly due, due to fractures uh, in fact all the permeability that's there in the coal is due to fractures and this is a permeability measured in different uh, basins in us using different type of tests and this basically one slide shows many things number one is that as permeability is very high more than 2 mg rc we can use a uh, simple dst test to measure that permeability uh, uh we have to make uh, when we get close to 1 mg rc we have to make extensive and very long build ups or sometime injectivity test to to measure permeability and uh, uh, but the permeability can go down to less than uh, 0.1 uh, near the 0.1 mg rc so permeability could vary in coal bed methane from tens of mg rc to 0.1 or mg rc so the two message that about ji ji so just quickly as you are you, you are working with the engineer to how we will be able to get stabilized pressure to measure this uh, this permeability things Yeah, that's right. So, if if for example permeability is uh, tens of mg rc, then it can be easily measured. Not a big deal. But, but yes, if permeability but is is less than yes. one mg rc, then we have to do injectivity test rather than doing a production. Yes. Test. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Absolutely. So the two messages coming from this slide are number one is that uh, the coal may have permeability more than a mg rc. so in that way it is not really unconventional it is not difficult to produce it can be produced easily yes tens of mg rc is good permeability we can easily produce it we don't need to do any stimulation even sometimes if permeability is less than 1 mg rc we may have to do some stimulation and increase that uh, that production rate so right. uh, stimulation uh, can, can we do acid stimulation here yeah? uh sometimes we do acid stimulation but we do acid stimulation only if we think that uh, those fractures are filled with the uh, calcite yes, sometimes those fractures can be filled with calcite in that case acid stimulation can be very helpful but quite often what we try to do is we try to create hydraulic fracture okay fracturing okay yeah simple hydraulic fracture either okay. horizontal well deviated well or hydraulic fractures if okay. there are uh, multiple seams then probably we do hydraulic fractures okay okay now uh, we already have covered this thing to some extent that uh, the initially the gas is uh, sticking with the core surface as we reduce that pressure the gas uh, starts coming out uh, from <coughs> those uh, from those uh, coal matrix in fact from coal matrix and diffuses through and goes into the fracture and that diffusion is basically controlled by not darcy law but that's controlled by 
what we call fixed law and that's the same thing that works also for shale gas so initially mm -hmm. diffusion through the matrix that is basically because of differences in the in the in the density uh, of 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 that material that makes that uh, some one thing flow towards uh, lower lower density so this is this is what happens uh, through fixed law the gas moves from uh, coal matrix into fractures once it goes into the fractures then it uh, it flows through the fractures using simple darcy law mm -hmm. okay and quite often we look at uh, really this uh, this this flow into the fractures because that's this first part happens by itself as we reduce the pressure on the on the left side okay and now in fact when the gas flows into the fracture then there is another challenge there and that challenge is uh, can you see that slide with the title yes. gas flow mechanism all right okay when the gas flows from a matrix what we see here is yellow uh, molecules are the molecules of gas which have been uh, released from the surface red is still sticking to the surface those yellow molecules eventually will make make their way into the fracture which is uh, this arrow thing and, and the through fractures already water is there so gas has to flow together with water so you can imagine this is a two phase flow initially because there is a lot of water present in the fractures so we have to consider relative permeability curves as you see on the right side so that that uh, we can estimate how much uh, permeability is there for the for the gas and how much permeability is there for the water and uh, so this two phase flow is there in the fractures eventually the amount of water will become less and less and uh, we may go into single phase gas flow uh, over time but initially it will be a two phase uh, gas and water flow through the fractures apna apna sab ye this relative per curves usually in fracture is a very straight line so does it exist or is it just schematically you have shown actually the these uh, as we saw before the phase cleats can be very extensive and almost straight lines Yes, straight line. But cleats, but cleats can be more uh, kind of opposite. But uh, eventually, those fractures. I mean, even if they are not straight through some uh, convoluted pass, they are connected to the well bore. Uh, that's okay. But uh, I mean, you can never have anything straight in nature. Eh? This is no. this is the lesson. But these fractures are yes. To to answer your question, Dr. Sir, these fractures are much more continuous compared to normal fractures that you see in uh, in inorganic rocks. Okay. because they are created by stresses and by dominant stress will create those fractures they are much more continuous than typical fractures but yes they are not really a uh, straight line they can be quite jagged i i think last time i showed you one core with fractures eh? and okay. you could see that the face cleats are quite continuous whereas butt cleats can be very uh, hepardous tick okay All right okay now another yes. thing that happens to the okay. to the yeah. core Yeah, yeah. Neep, Neep, Sam, question. No, no. I was just uh, going to remind that Akmal uh, Sahib, if you can just uh, wind up your proceedings within the next ten minutes, so that we have fifteen minutes of discussion for today's session. All right. Okay. Let me try to speed up, Dasha. All Thank right. You. So, so uh, what what really controls for me with the T? This is something important. Of course, this this is not at this stage. Later on, when we start producing this CVM, and hopefully, inshallah. we will uh, face this uh, this thing as we are reducing pressure through that fractures after production of uh, deep water during that deep watering stuff so water is not no more there that was keeping those fractures apart so fractures may actually close and they can reduce the permeability that's one thing that happens so over time we may see reduction in permeability another thing that happens is that initially the matrix coal matrix has gas in it but once that gas is released the coal matrix will shrink a little bit and that will increase the permeability so two opposite thing happens over time one is reduction of permeability because of removal of water and second is increase in permeability because of shrinkage of uh, coal itself okay so these two things combined what they do is initially there is a compaction that reduces permeability but over time uh, at later stage of production the matrix shrinkage may increase that permeability so this these things have to be basically taken into account while uh, predicting about the future this is a famous uh, palmer and mansouri study that was done where they kind of did similar work and that that shows that both porosity and permeability with vary uh, with pressure in coals all right so i'm going to speed up 
Now the basic reservoir engineering of coal in uh, in just two equations. So I hate to see these equations myself, but so original gas in place is on the left side is total area multiplied by thickness multiplied by bulk density of the coal and gas content per unit mass of the coal. So that basically very simply gives us the total uh, stored gas. At the same time, we may have some free gas, so we have to consider that free gas also. We can measure porosity. There is a little bit of micro porosity uh, inside the coal that may have some free gas inside it. So that gives us original gas in place. So from original gas in place, going to recovery factor that last time Dr. Sab had asked, what is the recovery factor of uh, uh, CBM? We go back to same linear isotherm. This is the initial gas. And imagine if we can reduce that pressure from on the right side, the, the diagram on the right side. Imagine the initial reservoir pressure was about 900 and about 10, uh, about 1000 PSI. And if we can manage to reduce that pressure and keep on producing that well and reach an abandonment pressure of let's say 100 PSI, we can see the difference in gas content from uh, upper red dot to lower red dot. And that difference will give us the total recovered gas from that coal, little coal. So that can be translated into recovery factor. So how much gas we can produce versus how much gas we had initially in place. Now this is fantastic. This can give us an easy way of getting recovery factor. And it can be very high, as we said last time, could be up to 80-90%. But in general, the coal CBM recoveries, if we consider all the heterogeneities and everything, could range probably about 40 to 50% in many okay. cases. Okay, these are a couple of, couple of terms that I think we should really understand, but let's keep it for a later, uh, later uh, session. Uh, what are the cores initially can be uh, undersaturated, which basically means that the gas, uh, the gas content in that coal can be higher than, uh, uh, can be lower than expected from the linear isotherm. That means the coal is undersaturated. We have to dewater that coal remove a lot of water, reduce that pressure until we reach a critical desorption pressure when the gas will start coming out from that coal. Okay, so we really have to, this, this linear isotherm becomes our, our main tool for all the understanding of the coal. We may have a coal which is wet coal, that means it has a lot of uh, initially moisture, we, it has a lot of water, we have to pump that water to produce that, uh, that gas, uh, dewater that, reduce the pressure and produce that water. Once that is that thing is done, we can actually remove that pump and the gas will keep on flowing from that well. Okay, so that is called dry coal. Sometime we may actually see some dry coal to start with. In, uh, in Australia, for example, we have coal which is dipping coals. We can dewater coal in the down dip area and that will automatically remove water from the up dip coals. So we may drill a well in the up dip and we may see there is already no water there, it's dry coal and we can just drill a well and start producing it. Sometimes it could be very, very simple and very cheap wells. Uh, this is about a little bit about well completion. There are many different types of well completions which are used. One is uh, on, the, on the left uh, figure is a cavity completion where we drill a well and enlarge that well from the uh, well bore, in fact, uh, to, to give a bigger area. That's uh, because from the coal, uh, making a cavity, it's a brittle rock, making a cavity is very easy. We just crush that coal and, uh, and, and remove that coal. We can drill, uh, make a hydraulic fracture as is shown on the upper right, uh, where hydraulic fracture creates, in fact, a very big uh, contact area to the reservoir. Or we may drill a horizontal well as shown in the lower right. We, we can discuss this, all these things, completion, which completion is used in which particular situation, depends on the, on the coal quality and its permeability and all that. Okay. So, Dasha, we come to an end of this session. My next, and th this is my agenda for next session, is that I will look at a country profile and I'll take India because that's our neighboring country. And uh, I managed to get a couple of good papers on that. And uh, I'll show you in which basins India is producing coal bed methane, how much they are producing, at what depth their coal is, what is the quality of that coal, etc. And the other example I will show you is the Porter River Basin because I believe that coal is probably more similar to our Thar coal. Very good.
ओके जी गुड थैंक यू वेरी मच मकना साहब अनिप साहब आपकी जल्द से मैं सरफराज फलंगी साहब को दावत दूंगा कि वो अपनी जरा एक्सपर्ट ओपिनियन दे इसलिए कि वो कॉल पे उन्होंने काम भी किया है सिंध यूनिवर्सिटी में प्रोफेसर हैं तो सरफराज फलंगी साहब प्लीज आप जरा हमें ब्रीफ कर दें कि आप आज हम सी पे बात कर रहे हैं तो आप ओवरऑल हमें बता दें कि आपके ख्याल में वहाँ पे सी बी एम या आपने अगर काम किया है तो कैसा है या सी बी एम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से वट इज योर व्यू थर्ड कॉल पे that's up thank you very much and uh, this was very informative and uh, what uh, we have earlier carried out some work this is uh, even uh, beyond that and uh, particularly talking about reservoir characterization uh, let me just uh, tell you uh, a brief history that uh, uh, i hope you remember as well that was uh, somewhere around 2010 we started uh, jointly work on cbm with uh, weather forecast company uh, in picture as well so we organized a couple of conferences there and uh, we learned from uh, uh, some of our experts uh, initial observations about thermal and uh, they were from uh, us report and they thought that uh, there may be potential for cbm and then uh, we started to collect data from here and there some uh, uh, exploration uh, wells of uh, petroleum company and uh, some uh, thermal uh, uh, actually drilling data uh, what we found that uh, thermal uh, while now it is already being open mined in some of the areas some of the blocks but whereas large part of thermal coal field uh, that is deeper than uh, the open pit mining potential and we were of the view that uh, there exist a uh, potential for cbm and particularly on areas away from the uh, main area which is under exploration now means north of the thermal field and west of the thermal field near no coal Uh, there is data suggesting that uh, coal quite significant in thickness can be found up to 1000 uh, meter or even beyond and that uh, carries more potential for cbm uh, we discussed many things with uh, some of our experts and tried to develop some uh, project but the point was that uh, Uh, there was uh, little technological uh, awareness as well as availability in pakistan and nothing in practical can be carried out to actually take samples for cbm uh, from thermal or other parts of sin so that it can be ascertained however uh, looking at some coal samples elite fractures and some other properties we did published as well and uh, carried out uh, porosity uh, measurements so there are uh, these characteristics suggest that potential does exist particularly in areas where coal is deeper uh, however uh, there is need that uh, proper uh, procedures may be adopted and someone should come forward uh, so that uh, measurements can be done Uh, about the availability or presence of cbm and then of course uh, with these uh, uh, new uh, examples what we heard today that even uh, reservoir uh, can be uh, actually through water injection and others uh, we can maximize the gas output so uh, for time being uh, there is little information uh, uh, which is available Uh, where practically any measurements or tests have been carried out in sin okay thank you very much uh, sufras long sir that's great ye bahut hi achhi information aapne di hai jo hamare khatiyat the ke wo takriban aapke sath milte jo nahi hai ke cbm pe utna detail mein kaam nahi hua jitna hame chahiye tha kuch andaza hai lekin us tarah practically scientific study nahi hui iski basis pe hum ye ascertain kar sake yes there is a cbm or there is no cbm तो ये तो अच्छा चले हमें अच्छा पॉइंट आपने दे दिया जो काम हुआ हुआ है अभी ये है कि जो कोर्स तो जो कोर्स भी मेरे ख्याल में हुई होंगी वो भी इसी तरह ही पड़ी होंगी साउथ जैरो कुछ नहीं होगा 
अभी आप मुझे बताएं कि सफराज सलोंगी साहब यू वर्क ऑन दी ग्राउंड अभी वे फॉरवर्ड क्या हो सकता है एक तो वे फॉरवर्ड हमने ऑलरेडी किया हुआ है कि आप लोग हमने डिस्कस किया कि एक डिटेल स्टडी करने की जरूरत है और वो सिंध कोल अथॉरिटी के साथ मिलकर हो सकती है क्योंकि कोल जो है इस वक्त वो प्रोवेंशियल सब्जेक्ट है फेडरल गवर्नमेंट की फंडिंग हो सकती है मुख्तलिफ कंपनियाँ फंडिंग कर सकती है इसके लिए सी के लिए पार्टिकुलरली स्टडी करने की जरूरत है वो सिंध कोल अथॉरिटी के साथ या किसके साथ मिलकर कैसे की जा सकती है आपके व्यू से did discuss this point uh, at a certain uh, uh, time few years back aur uske liye humne ye suggest kiya tha ki we should select at least two or three uh, points jahan pe drill karke proper samples liye jaye as per international standard aur usme bhi ye issue tha ke jo uske container hain canisters hain jisme sample liya jata hai तो वो भी फैसिलिटी हमारे यहाँ अवेलेबल नहीं थी वी डिड डिस्कस विद वेदर इफ दे कैन प्रोवाइड बट एट दैट टाइम दैट वाज नॉट पॉसिबल लेकिन उसके बाद फिर जो ड्रिलिंग है या उसका जो एक्सपेंसेस हैं दैट वर क्वाइट कंसीडरेबल तो मैं ये समझता हूँ कि देर आर सर्टेन एरियाज फॉर एग्जाम्पल नो कोल विच इज लिटिल बिट फार अवे फ्राम थर कोल फील्ड वेयर कोल इज एट कंसिडरेबल as well as its thickness is quite good so wahan par agar iske samples liye jaye proper coring karke and then uh, we can uh, get some results you know ke jiski buniyad pe aadmi uh, further jo hai study uh, ki ja sakti hai sir fasa ye aap kis kis coal ki baat ki aapne kaun sa ji sir ye aapne kis coal ki baat ki hai which coal सर ये थर कोल की एक्सटेंशन ही है क्योंकि थर कोल जो फील्ड है उसको तो रेस्ट्रिक्ट कर दिया गया है कि हमने बना दिया पॉलीगान के थर कोल यहाँ तक है लेकिन थर कोल गोज बियॉन्ड दैट आगे क्या होता है कि इसकी डेप्थ इंक्रीज होती है नौ कोट इज इन वेस्ट ऑफ थर कोल टाउन है नौ कोट थर कोल के बाद इस्लाम कोट मिठी उसके बाद नौ कोट आता कंसिडर किया था कि जहाँ डेप्थ ज्यादा होगी थर कोल सॉरी कोल की जो है तो वहाँ चांसेस सी बी एम के ज्यादा होंगे और अगर हम थरकोल की बात करते हैं तो ये जहां पर अभी एक्सप्लोरेशन हो रही है उसके नॉर्थ में भी देर इज कंसिडरेबल डेप्थ 300 मीटर 400 मीटर तो दो हजार विच कैन बी इन्वेस्टिगेटेड और उसके अलावा नौ कोट की हम इसलिए बात कर रहे हैं क्योंकि वहां एक्सप्लोरेटरी वर्ल्ड लगाए गए थे और उसमें पता चला है कि डीप है कोल लेकिन उसकी इतने सिग्निफिकेंट है तो वी थॉट के देर मे बी मोर चांसेस फॉर द अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ सी बी एम तो उसके लिए फर्दर कोई कोरिंग एज वेल एज उसकी प्रॉपर जो है इंटरनेशनल स्टैंडर्ड के मुताबिक उसकी सैम्पलिंग एंड एनालिस अगर हो सके तो दैट कैन प्रोवाइड सम आंसर क्योंकि जो अमेरिकन ने थोड़ी बहुत सैम्पलिंग की थी आई थिंक देर वर अबाउट टू सैम्पल्स तो एट द एंड उसमें कोई खास सी बी एम डिटेक्ट नहीं हुई थी तो दे थाट के जो उनका सैम्पलिंग का प्रोसीजर था वो इतना रोबस्ट नहीं था एंड दैट इट सेल्फ हैड सर्टेन डिफेक्ट अब अब ये बताइए कि जो जो अमेरिकन ने सैंपल लिए थे उसकी डिटेल्स है कहीं पर किसने कहाँ से सैंपल लिए थे कितनी डेप से सैंपल लिए थे कैसे सैंपल लिए थे उनके रिजल्ट्स कहीं डॉक्यूमेंट जी हाँ ये रिपोर्ट है उनकी इनिशियल इफ आई राइटली रिमेंबर फिलिपिनो या समथिंग लाइक दैट अमेरिका तो उनकी जो ये इनिशियल रिपोर्ट थी दैट मस्ट बी अवेलेबल समवेयर नेट पे या वो कहां पे कहां पे अवेलेबल हो सकती है आपके पास है आपकी यूनिवर्सिटी में या किसके पास होगी सर ये मैं ढूंढ सकता 
सकता हूँ ये पॉसिबल है कि मुझे मिल जाए अभी आई रिटायर्ड अबाउट वन एंड हाफ ईयर्स गो तो सर ये तो टाइम है काम करने का बेहतरीन टाइम यही होता है वेरी ट्रू वेरी ट्रू आई रिमेम्बर वन ऑफ माई प्रोफेसर इन यू के वो रिटायरमेंट के बाद मिला तो उसने कहा कि उनकी जो है परफॉर्मेंस रिटायरमेंट के बाद बढ़ गई है ये बिकम मोर साइंटिफिक ये तो बहुत अच्छी बात है तो सफाज सफाज साहब आपसे गुजारिश है कि अगर आपके पास सीबीएम का जो भी लिटरेचर सपोज अवेलेबल है फ्रॉम दैट अमेरिकन रिपोर्ट्स अप टू योर वर्क वो किसी तरीके से हमारे साथ आप शेयर कर सकते हैं ताकि हम अपनी स्टोरी का बेस बनाएं कि क्या क्या हो चुका है और क्या हमें करना है और कहाँ से शुरू करना है जिसमें आप भी हमारी हेल्प करेंगे और ये सारा जो है ना हम सारे लोग वॉल्टियर काम करने वाले हैं सारा एक एक ये वॉल्टियरिज्म पे काम हो रहा है और हम फंडिंग की कोशिश करेंगे कि जहाँ पे ड्रिलिंग की जरूरत है साफ जाहिर हम तो नहीं कर सकते हम तो नॉलेज की वॉल्टियरिज्म कर सकते हैं और एफर्ट्स कर सकते हैं जो आप भी हम कर रहे हैं और इनकी बेसिस पे हम गवर्नमेंट को रिकमेंडेशन दे के सिंध कोल अथॉरिटी के साथ बात करके फेडरल लेवल पर बात करें कुछ फंडिंग अरेंज करें और ताकि मजीद इसकी स्टडी हो सके लेकिन बेसिक वर्क हमारे पास होना चाहिए जहाँ से हम अपनी इमारत की बुनियाद रखें जी जी डॉक्टर साहब आई अप्रिशिएट और दिस इज द मोस्ट निगलेक्टेड एरिया और उस पर अगर आप काम करना चाहते हैं तो दैट विल बी वेरी गुड एंड आई विल बी वेरी प्लीज टू प्रोवाइड वट एवर डिटेल्स दिस मटीरियल और आई कैन गेट होल्ड ऑफ दैट आई कैन सेंड इट टू यू आई हैव योर ई मेल एड्रेस और यू कैन शेयर ई मेल एड्रेस so once i get that i can send it to you thank you ji anip sahab aap koi question karna chahenge ji selangi sahab apna jo americans ka aap baat kar rahe hain evidence ki ke unhe evidence nahi mila inki location ka aapne mera kala mention kiya ye location kya what was the location uh, i can't remember exactly but that was in tharkol field थरकोल फील्ड की कोई एक आध लोकेशन थी जहाँ उन्होंने ये लिए थे सीबीएम ये जो अमेरिकन की स्टडी थी ये स्पेसिफिकली सीबीएम के लिए थी और वाज इट पार्ट ऑफ एनी अदर स्टडी ऑफ फॉर फॉर कोल करेक्टराइजेशन और और पार्ट ऑफ थरकोल एक्सप्लोरेशन जो शुरुआत में उन्होंने की थी एंड स्पेसिफिकली वो सीबीएसई नहीं थी इसके लिए जो जॉन फिलिप ने की थी दैट वॉज प्योरली फॉर सी बी एम आई बिलीव एंड वी कैन गेट होड ऑफ दैट रिपोर्ट दैट वुड बी आई थिंक ए गुड स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट और लास्ट टाइम रिजवान साहब ने भी डिस्कस किया था लेकिन वो तो प्राइमर कहता है कि प्राइमर ऑन सीबीएम एंड पाकिस्तान समथिंग लाइक दैट उसका टाइटल है और लेकिन उसमें जो डिफेक्ट था कि प्रॉपर सैंपलिंग मतलब वो नहीं कर सके थे हाउ एवर ही डिड डिस्कस मेनी अदर थिंग्स यू नो एंड ही सजेस्टेड फॉर फर्दर इन्वेस्टिगेशन तो उस रिपोर्ट को अब तक देख लेंगे तो उनका जो सैंपलिंग का प्रोसीजर था दैट वॉज Not uh, robust. और uh, उन्होंने खुद कहा कि अगर प्रॉपर इसकी दोबारा uh, सैंपलिंग की जाए विद अवेलेबल इक्विपमेंट पॉसिबल है कि उसके रिजल्ट्स डिफरेंट आए और अच्छा में हुई थी सॉरी सुलंगी साहब विच ईयर वॉज दिस I can't remember. I'm sorry, but uh, either late 80s or uh, early 90s. So uh, the, the reason I'm saying that uh, since 80s and 90s, I mean, uh, over 30 years have elapsed, or 30 to 40 years have elapsed, and uh, so much uh, advancement in technology has taken place 
so i think uh, it makes sense to actually relook at it and then also relate that uh, piece of information and relate that to recent uh, studies that have been carried out and what kind of equipment uh, that was uh, used in order to carry out such studies so i think if we can uh, prepare some kind of a package that if we have to carry out a small feasibility study what will it entail uh, will we be able to carry out this study using our own resources or will we have to deploy some uh, someone from outside of the country ideally i mean can you comment on that please sulangi sir so main further add karu ke one point uh, we were in touch with uh, dr nadim if you uh, uh, i'm sure ke uh, ppl mein the uh, abhi mujhe nahi pata uh, kaun si company mein dr nadim aur humne bhi milke kuch kaam kiya tha even unhone ppl mein official level pe they took some initiative aur unki jo report thi ya whatever wo to nahi dekh sake hain but ye bhi ek hai ki hum kabhi dr nadim sahab ko bhi involve kare aur further unse dr nadim of ogtcl no no dr nadim i think is in uav right now nadim ahmed ki baat kar rahe hain ne sorry is nadim ki baat kar nadim ahmed ya kis ki baat kar rahe ho aap जो लोग एडवांस जिस तरह मनास ने साहब ने काम किया हुआ है ऑस्ट्रेलिया में सारे तो अभी हम ये एक्सपेक्ट नहीं करते प्रोवेंशन लेवल पे कोई आदमी इसको डिफाइन कर गया की हमें कौन सी टेक्नोलॉजी है क्योंकि वहाँ ये चीज डिवेलप नहीं हो सकी अभी तक अभी ये काम हमने करना है विद हेल्प ऑफ आप जिस तरह सुभाष लंगी साहब के पास बेसिक डेटा है इनसे लेकर इनसे इन्फॉर्मेशन लेके तो ये जो न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी की अप्लाई हुई है क्योंकि हमने शेल के ऊपर भी काम किया जी डी में जब मैं था तो हमने शेल के ऊपर ये जो कनेस्टर गैस वैसा ये सारी कोरिंग उसके साथ ही हुई है तो अभी सिर्फ जरूरत है कि हमें वेल डेल करके कोरिंग करनी है जिसके ऊपर ये सारी गैस डिटर्मिन करनी है जो भी आपको ना साहब ने कहा अब इतना बड़ा काम नहीं इतनी बहुत एक्सपेंसिव भी नहीं है इसमें हमें थोड़ी सी एफर्ट करनी पड़ेगी इसका जितना भी फ्लो वर्क है ना वो वी हैव टू डिफाइन विद द हेल्प एंड गाइडेंस ऑफ द प्रोफेसर सुलंगी साहब जो वहां के हैं जहां उनके पास बेसिक डाटा है तो वी हैव टू डिफाइन इट ना वर्क क्योंकि काफी अरसा हो गया वहां पे किसी ने काम भी नहीं किया हुआ तो वहां पे इस तरह की चीज डेवलप भी नहीं हुई एब्सोल्युटली डॉक्टर साहब वी हैव टू वी हैव टू स्टार्ट विद आवर बेसिक वर्क और पहला चीज ये होनी चाहिए कि वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड के जो हमारे कोल बेड हैं उनकी डेप्थ्स क्या है टू बिल्कुल रियली टू स्टार्ट विद वी प्रोबली जो थर्ड कोल है उसमें जो माइनिंग कर रहे हैं वो हम जो शेलो कोल सीम्स हैं उसकी माइनिंग कर रहे हैं वी मे हैव मच मोर एक्चुअली कोल सीम्स विच आर डीपर एंड दिस इज दिस इज देयर इन एवरी बेसन जहाँ पर कोल्स हैं इट हैज बेसिकली कोल हैज बिन डिपॉजिटेड ओवर लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम सो इफ देर आर कोल बैड्स एज शेलो देर मस्ट भी सम कोल बैड्स डीपर आर दिस सेम कोल बैड्स डाउन डेप मस्ट भी मच डीपर सो वी रियली हैव टू फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड दी काइंड ऑफ जोमेट्री ऑफ दोज कोल बैड्स and the uh, how many different coal seams we have this is the starting work i don't know in fact if uh, uh, sulangi sahab if you can answer me this question jab aap coal star coal dekhe hain study kiya hai did you look at any of the seismic data uh, uh seismic data sir hum nahi dekh sake hain uh, albatta jo core ke liye drilling hui hai even outside star coal field तो उसके भी कुछ डेटा वाज अवेलेबल वो अथॉरिटी या किसी और ने अगर ड्रिलिंग की है तो एट वन पॉइंट वी हैड दैट इंफॉर्मेशन एज वेल और उसी की बुनियाद पे मैं कह रहा हूँ कि देर आर एरियाज बियॉन्ड द सदरन थर कोल फील्ड वेयर कोल इज एट सर्टेन हायर डेप्थ और उसकी भी रीजनेबल है जहाँ सी के लिए काम किया जा सकता है अच्छा okay. इसमें एक सर चीज में जी जी जी, जी। अच्छा मैं सर थोड़ा सा थोड़ा सा ऐड ऑन करना चाहूंगा अच्छा सा है आ, अभी अतीक साहब जो हैं डायरेक्टर जीएसपी कराची वो मेरा ख्याल में हमारे प्रोग्राम में शामिल होना चाह रहे थे लेकिन वो आ, टीम पे लॉग इन नहीं हो सके तो अतीक अच्छा। साहब ने बताया कि माशाला जी कराची ने इस पर बहुत अच्छा काम किया है और ठीक ठाक किस्म की कोरिंग की है उन्होंने 
और उनके पास पूरा कोर डेटा अवेलेबल है और इसके अलावा उन्होंने बताया कि जीएसपी ने स्पेशली अपने एक एम्प्लॉ को इस पर पी करने के लिए चाइना भेजा था सी के ऊपर ही और वो पूरे कोर के सैंपल्स लेके चाइना गए हैं और बता रहे हैं कि बड़ा अच्छा रिजल्ट आया उसके ऊपर तो मैंने उनसे रिक्वेस्ट की है स्पेशली के नेक्स्ट जो हमारा सेशन हो वो उसमें ज्वाइन करें और हमारे साथ डेटा भी शेयर करें और उन्होंने जीएसपी की बिहार पे कहा कि जीएसपी रेडी है जीएसपी तो कोलेबोरेशन भी कर सकती है इसमें हमारे साथ डेटा भी शेयर करेगी और इनशाला नेक्स्ट सेशन में अतायर जो जो एनर्जी बुक में डेटा पब्लिश है उसमें 500 हंड्रेड होल्स किए गए हैं और जीएसपी ने ये काम किया सारा 500 हंड्रेड होल्स फाइव ब्लॉक्स के अंदर जो ब्लॉक्स जी जो ब्लॉक्स है इस वक्त थर कोल के अंदर पांच ब्लॉक चार ब्लॉक है जिनमें 500 हंड्रेड होल्स किए गए हैं मुख्तलिफ डेप्थ पे अगर जीएसपी ने ये होल किया साफ जाहिर उनके पास जो मुनासब है कि बेड थिकनेस जब होल डेल होता है तो डेफिनेटली उन्होंने लाक भी किए होंगे और डेप्थ के साथ उन्होंने बेड की और जियोलॉजिकल मैपिंग भी की होगी तो काफी सारा डेटा मिलेगा जैसे तायर कह रहे हैं कि अगर उन्होंने सी पे किसी लड़के को भेजा है तो उसका मतलब है कि उसकी आउटकम भी हम अगर हमें पता है तो फिर तो मजीद बेहतर हो जाएगा कि उसकी इनपुट लेके फिर फर्दर किया जा सकता है कि भाई हमें इस पे क्या करना चाहिए ये बहुत अच्छी बात है अगर हो सके तो जो आपके जी एस पी के जो साहब है ना अगर उनसे पहले एक डिस्कशन हो जाए मे बी मी डॉक्टर साहब अगर आप डिस्कशन जी सर मैं ये कहना चाहता हूँ की एक थोड़ा सा काम हमने भी इसके ऊपर किया था नियर अबाउट इस्लाम कोर्ट के एरिए में ना तो कुछ हमारे पास वेल डेटा था और उसमें जो है ना वो शलम बर्जर ने भी इसके ऊपर कुछ जो है वो काम किया हुआ है तो मुझे चेक करना पड़ेगा अगर तो अवेलेबल हुई तो अगर वो रिपोर्ट अवेलेबल हुई तो वो मैं शेयर करूंगा जो है ना उसमें तो वो भी काफी हेल्पफुल होगी जो है ना ठीक है गुड गुड लेट्स कलेक्ट ऑल द इंफॉर्मेशन सर जस्ट फॉर इन्फॉर्मेशन मैं नहीं 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 आपकी आपकी आवाज आवाज आ आ रही रही बिल्कुल आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही कोई गड़बड़ है बीच में सिग्नल का थोड़ा सा या बाहर निकले या कुछ या री इंटर हो जाए कुछ इस तरह है बस ठीक में आप एंड करते यू कैन जस्ट डू अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ प्लानिंग फॉर नेक्स्ट सेशन जी वी विल माय प्लान दिस वाज माय प्लान फॉर नेक्स्ट सेशन to do a case history of india case history of border i think at the same time what we should do is to uh, between now and next session we can have some discussion with gs uh, pakistan and at least at a very high level uh, recap what we learned from gs ji agar 